Hello! Do you remember this thing? This was, or well still is I suppose, the Holy Stone 175D. A waste of about 30 or 40 hours of my life trying to get it to fly, failing, I made several videos about it, I had two of these, three controllers, wouldn't work. For some reason, although it was months and months ago, people still insist on telling me quite often that I was doing it all wrong and I'm rubbish and I don't know how to read a manual and this thing is the best thing since sliced bread. Despite the fact that even when it did fly, the camera was awful and it was all shaky and rubbish, I can only suspect that these people don't have eyes that work properly. Anyway, in order to try and appease this and put this to bed once and for all, I thought, can I do something to actually make it fly well? Um, what, what is it? What could I do to this thing to make it fly? Let's have a think. So here is the 175D and I thought the best thing I could do is take this, open it up, then take away all these bits because they look a bit boring. They were just hanging around inside and they're like circuit boards and screws and bits of tape, weirdly. And then put some other stuff in to make it look like that. Now, you probably won't see a great deal of difference if you look at them uh, externally and they both fold up and they both use the original battery connector. The, the slight giveaway on the one on the left here is you can probably see my bit of hot glue sticking out the bottom. And uh, that is the antenna for the VTX. So this has been beta flighted up. Um, but for a bit more of a, an idea of how I did that, let me show you the bunches of videos I shot while I was trying to figure out what I was doing. Bear in mind that I was just quickly doing this on my uh, phone while I was figuring stuff out and deciding what to put in there. So the quality is not great, but it'll give you through the, the idea of what I was up to. Once we've done that, we'll take this out and fly this thing and see if we can make this an acro quad and not a crack quad. Okay, so there were no less than 14 screws, all different sizes, to get the top off of this guy, which came off of a bit of a struggle. And there's this bit that pops up at the front. What we seem to have there is this board working as the flight controller and ESC. Each of the motors is connected up there. We've got the antenna down here facing backwards, which is not going to give the best signal ever. There's the on off switch there. We've got the LED lights there. There's something there and we've got what I could suggest is an attempt at shielding the GPS compass. Well, I thought this was perhaps a bit of metal, but it just looks like actually a piece of gaffer tape, which isn't going to shield much, just keep the metal bit away from the other stuff. Uh, so let's get this out and we can see if we can find out anything about it. Okay, so we've reached a point where we really have to uh, desolder this to have a better look. It looks to me like, I guess these three thicker ones here are the motor wires. Then of course we've got LEDs under that, which are probably something to do with those wires. I don't know why we've got four of them though. That's a little bit confusing, but we'll have to take this apart to really get to grips with that. But we really need to get this off. And then we've got these lights here and we've obviously got sensors underneath. Stuff to make more room. We've got a little bit of a squeeze here to try and get any card in. Uh, only like two of these pins are going to be used here for the battery connector. Obviously you need to reuse that in some way if we can. Interesting, quite challenging. Don't know what this is. Gonna have a look at that in a second. Anyway, let's get these out and then we can really work at it. Well, I found the data sheet on this and it seems to be wired up slightly differently. If we look at that, we can see it says TX, RX, VDD and ground. But back here, literally, well, it's like if you follow the the normal wiring colouring convention, that would be 5 volts, that would be ground, and then you'd get into the TXRX and the I2C stuff. But just measured it with a multimeter, and yeah, that is the RX-TX. The white and red are ground and 5 volt. It's like, who does stuff like that? I mean, fortunately, it is written just about here. You can just kind of see under there, you've got TXRX. I don't know why they choose that color wiring. It's crazy. So I just took apart this arm, which is actually a bit of a struggle because it's very tight in here. I uh, took a little bit of prizing out and surprisingly, we actually have an ESC in this. I saw so many cables coming out. I assumed that the ESC uh, would be on that board, but it's not, which makes things a lot easier for me. 
interesting though, we'll see we've got four wires here. We've got black and red, obviously ground and uh, voltage. Then we've got blue, which looks like it's attached to S, which I would take to be signal. But then we've got a white going to V. Is it a censored ESC or is that sort of some sort of ESC telemetry? I'm not sure. I suppose what the other wire might be is just another ground. Um, often ESCs, and we're so used to ESCs being on single 401 boards now, they used to come with um, a ground and a signal. And obviously sometimes uh, 5 volt as well if they had a back on them. So I'm wondering if this is the case of like input voltage there, ground and signal. I think I'm going to try and fire it up just using the uh, voltage, ground and try the signal wire to see if I can get the motor to spin. Well, I've just connected up with uh, the servo tester here, but I'm not getting the motor spinning up. And I'm wondering, is this actually set up to use something other than PWM? I suppose I'll have to test that out first. What a curious ESC this is. I went back and I measured voltages here. I found out that the Vs were common, so I assumed them to be ground, but when I measured them, they're actually putting out battery voltage. And what I found was this ESC needs both voltages coming in on different wires to work. As soon as you get that working, it'll go. So now we understand how this motor and ESC work, but that's it. If anybody knows what this ESC is, let me know. I've had a search. I couldn't find anything about it. Some of the chip stuff's been obfuscated. Uh, let me know just to understand it. I don't know if this speaks anything other than PWM. I'll try it out later. But now we've got that working, I'm confident about how we can connect those to the flight controller. Um, the ones at the back are the ones with the LED. So I need to have a look at one of them. And I also need to get under there to find out how the camera and the sensors are made. Hopefully we've got a bit more room there because we're gonna need to do some sort of PDB and maybe fit the flight controller on top of that. Okay, once we lift this battery tray out, we get this, because we've got another board down here because this transmit Wi-Fi, we've got another one of these tape things. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be insulating or what. Obviously you'd have some noise coming from the camera that's obviously the servo built in there. Uh, I don't think there's much we're going to need in this bit because this is all to do with the sensors at the, the bottom. So let's get this board out and see what we got. Another interesting point here is we seem to have twin antennas on the UFLs and the antennas are integrated into the rear legs, which is, well, that's different. Okay, so what we've done down here is we've cut away this bit to give us room to get in. The camera's in. The VTX should go down there. I'm just checking out the wiring we've got there. What we've done is we've cut the circuit board just to get that little connector so we can take the positive and negative there. Um, I'm just checking out sizes here. And what I'm going to do is put in these little bits of copper to act as sort of power distribution board, one for the plus one for the minus, but we need uh, slightly longer cables here because the FC is going to go about there. And what I've done, I just printed out a couple of these tiny little wedges because what I've got here is where we cut that down, we had to put another little wedge there, which is keeping the battery. And now the receiver, I'm thinking, might go under here in maybe that little divot um, and the antenna for the VTX go out of there. And I'm going to say screw it as far as the GPS goes because there's no room and I don't really care. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to start soldering this thing in a minute and uh, hope for the best. This is a bit of a squeeze. It will just about go on there if we get everything lined up properly. But it's it's still pretty big. I'd prefer a 16mm, but uh, you get what you're given. There's a lot of cable stuff to do next. Okay, receiver-wise, I decided we need something that would fit underneath that bit. And so what I've done, I've gone ahead and used one of the um, little B FPV flat antenna types, which I can stick all the way out here uh, with the flat antenna down. And that should, uh, well, hopefully not get a bad signal, but, you know, I'm not going to fly this far. So let's see how that does. So this is a kind of pain. Uh, I had this all wired in. I had this a little bit tidy, but not brilliantly tidy. 
I'm plugged in this battery and the ESCs would turn on, but the flight controller wouldn't. Now, if I plugged the USB in as well as the battery, then things would fire up and I could spin on the motors and that was good. And despite this saying 7 to 40 volts in, that doesn't seem to be the case. I have got here a 2S battery, uh, just on about 7 volts. If I plug this one in, all plugged in and nothing. Dead as a dodo. If I go ahead and plug in a 3S, I thought I had video here of me plugging in a 3S, but I seem to have turned the video off. To check this, I used my desktop power supply and I went from 7 volts upwards in 1 voltage steps, and the board sprang into life as soon as I put at least 10 volts through it, but that's different to 7 volts, and only having a 2S battery going into this, that's obviously no good for me at all, so I'm going to have to switch flight controllers. Okay, found this old Ishin uh, F4 board. This is the one in the, like, the Tyro quad. This seems to run off the 2S. <sighs> so it looks like we're redoing all the wiring again. Yeah, it was so tidy before, look. <laughs> Finally, we seem to have got a good one. Do this. System powers up. Telemetry recovered. I can even arm it. And even spin the props. Very carefully, <laughs> they're not attached. Right. Needs a bit of a tidy up, just a touch, and the uh, LEDs need connecting somehow. We have lights, we have camera, we have OSD. We've just got to do a bit more setup and then figure out how to squish all these cables in <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Well, here we are in the field, ready to test this thing out. And when I came here, I thought, oh, the cows must be hiding somewhere. I'll, I'll stand here, well, I'll sit here and I'll fly around. I've just been flying another quad. And it turns out that the cows are in fact just behind, well, just in the shade over the other side. So hopefully they won't get up. The cows aren't a problem about like being aggressive or stuff. They're just inquisitive. So they come over and they just stand on your stuff. So got, got to be ready to go at a moment's notice. I did fly this or hover this in the garden just quickly, but the GoPro didn't record any sound. So I thought I'll do a quick line of sight flight. Now I've got a bit more room and see how it does. It's a lot more windy than this is designed for. This is really a zero wind quad, or it was when it was first released. Of course, don't forget it had a, a limit on how far you can angle it. Now this is on beta flight, I should be able to angle it as far as I like. But yeah, I, it's gonna be difficult to tune when it's gonna be wobbling around in the wind, especially given that, you know, this only works on PWM, which is very slow and very rubbish. But hey, let's see how it goes. Let's get this thing uh, turned on and let's fly it. Okay. First, we open up. Second, slide this guy in. Here it goes. Telemetry recovered. As you know, it's on ELRS. I'm going to fly it in uh, angle mode because I'm not very good at line of sight stuff, but let's see how that goes. That's all right, the wind, we're very protected here just under this bush, so it's, it's gonna go all right. Oh. <laughs> uh, apparently, I didn't realize it wouldn't stop very quickly, so <laughs> I almost took myself out, but I'm okay, I'm okay. Let's try this again. Pretty smooth. There's not much power. It's, it's 2S. Um, quite large props, I suppose, for 2S. But it's seemingly looking pretty good, isn't it? I haven't got a problem with this. Right, I'm ready to FPV this. I think we're going to go gentle on the first battery or two before we go full acro crazy a bit later and uh, probably smash it up, but we'll see what happens. Let's land this. Disarm. How does it feel? Well, 
it's a little bit shaky. It's a light quad in a lot of wind. And I've got very <laughs> basic antennas and stuff, but hey, it's flying. Bobble, bobble, bobble. It's very quiet. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, the VTX is having a problem. Come on, find yourself, find yourself. I think we might have to put this into uh, legacy mode. Because that was very frightening. <laughs> get from a fan. Should we do it? See what happens. Yeah, it's pretty slow. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the worst thing ever. Let's try it again. And punch. Try to dive, a little dive. Whoa, whoa. Did not like doing it. Well, it's fine on the dive. Coming out of the dive was <laughs> it was not happy at all. This is going to be interesting to do some acro on. I think. I think we could smash it to pieces. But let's uh, bring it in. I'm going to change my VTX over to uh, legacy mode so I don't get that thing again. And uh, try zipping up the the power on the VTX, which I don't know whether it will work or not. I kept saying change my VTX, I meant change my rapid fire. Uh, modules like the rapid fire have this thing where they try and assemble the best frame from both antennas, but if you get this combination of a camera and VTX, which is apparently not putting out the right signal or having some problems, you'll get that rolling screen issue. And it's pretty frightening to get because you just have to sort of sit there and, and bear with it for sort of 20 seconds until it gets going again. And so putting it in legacy mode puts it back to a regular diversity. So it takes it off one antenna or the other. So yeah, I got pretty bored in flying normally straight away. And I thought, you know, I'll go up high. We'll see what happens if we try some little bits of acro and um, it felt pretty much okay. It's a little bit weird because the camera is quite a distance away from where the props are. So whereas in a normal quad, you're very sort of lined up uh, central with the arm. So when you're doing like a roll or a flip, it feels like you're right in the middle of it. On this quad, it kind of feels like you're, you're some appendage on the, on the outside of it. So it feels a little bit weird when this is happening. The the other reason I mentioned about uh, the VTX might not work is because I couldn't identify what sort of VTX this was and that meant that I couldn't set up the VTX table correctly. At the end of it I kind of hoped and guessed it was working on Smart Audio 2 where essentially you say my power is 1, 2, 3 and it, it sort of works out what it has because if it was anything else I'd have to put the the right decibel version in for whatever power it puts and I've no idea what power it puts out. I'm I'm hoping this is somewhere about 200 milliwatts but I've, I've no idea. I've no idea if it works or not. What I am getting here is a pretty dodgy signal from the receiver. If you remember we've got one of those flat antenna receivers for Express LRS shoved right under the battery which is not in the best place ever. Um, and that seems to be really dropping the signal as we go along. I'm only using 100 milliwatts of power on the radio, so that's something I can up. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit wobbly and bobbly, or as we'd say 10 years ago, hey, this flies pretty nicely, and it kind of feels a little bit like that because the ESCs we're dealing with here, which only work on PWM, I tried everything to try and get them to work on anything else, wasn't having it. 
don't uh, particularly work very well and really won't tune up that well anyway so I wasn't too worried about the fact it bobbles around sometimes you get this period where it's like oh it's nice and smooth now it's it's very susceptible to wind because it's very very light but it has quite a, a sort of large body and that makes it blow around a bit the other thing which is really really odd about it is if I go into a dive as I pull out the dive uh, and I've talked about your washout before which is often something you get in a tiny wheel where it will suddenly you're off to one side this does that but it keeps yawing for a couple of seconds so it, it as I go down it pulls to the right but it carries on uh, like so you have to fight with it for a few seconds before you sort of recover anything back from it really it's very very odd so if you look at the link quality and the dbm value here we are right at the limit of of what we get i think we get up to about minus 110 before this thing loses signal completely so that was a little bit too close for comfort so on the next battery what i'm going to do is put the uh, value of the transmitter up but yeah the, the general gist of you know flying and, and doing light acro that bit's going okay so I tried doing some split S's and there's just no inertia on this thing. It, it almost completely stops when I take away any forward movement. Part of the reason for this is I've got the camera angled up as much as I could inside that space, but there's really not that much angle. So to get full speed out of it, which admittedly isn't fast, I'm I'm pretty much looking into the, the grass itself. But yeah, my, um, my split S's weren't very good, but I give it a, a go at an inverted yaw spin. I thought, why not? So we're punching up, up, slowly, and yeah, that was kind of a bit all over the place. And then it's kind of fighting with me. Let's skip ahead to um, the third battery and see how that one went. So I put my Radio TX power up to 500 milliwatts here, which I didn't expect to boost the signal very much, but it only has to do it a little bit, just so I can at least get sort of behind myself, behind the bush, and see if I can get just through these trees here, because you're not acro flying if you're not flying under something. As you can see here, it's a little bit smoother because we're protected a little bit more by the wind from getting down under those um, bushes and stuff. And look at me doing two rolls it in a row and let's get back and have another go of that uh, your spin yeah that was better that kind of worked have a look as we come out of the dive here now i'm just going straight and you see the your pull right round to the right and it keeps pulling you literally have to fight with it for those couple of seconds that i described it's very very odd indeed and, and obviously it's just about this quad and the weirdness of it you, you can pretty much know it's going to happen and start yawing the other direction and that kind of works as well. I'm getting used to its little quirky bits and, and feel happier to fly it. It's it's that and sort of not caring about sort of crashing it which is letting me try stuff out but at the same time it's not exactly quick. I mean I put 100% on the throttle into it and it really doesn't go that quick. It's quite an amusing shadow to uh, chase after it's quite weird and that's about as good as my split s's go on this one it's it's just not that great for doing them you see we got 100 percent power down then and it, it wasn't all that quick really yeah i'm a little bit nervous going through the trees just because it can blow around so much so everything is looking it looks a bit like acro but slow motion i suppose this is 2s acro on what should be a 4 or 6s quad in in size terms really but I like this little bit. I like going under the trees, plus because it's so shielded from the wind, it's the only bit in the entire field that feels fairly smooth. Um, you can even fool yourself into thinking you're going a reasonable speed, which of course you're not really. And then we just throw in a, a, a little bit of light acro there just for, just for good relief. Look at me doing a roll. Anyway, despite the fact I thought I would definitely crash this and break it into a million pieces, uh, it didn't happen. I just kept flying it around and around, doing much the same stuff. And essentially the battery lasts too long. It's, I think it's something like a 1300 milliamp 2S, but I guess it's fairly efficient. It uses uh, little motors with big props, which I guess don't spin that fast. And so you really can't get that much power down to it. So I'm coming into landing here with six minutes to the clock and the battery's only at 7.6. I could go all the way down to 6.6, .6, but I figure that's enough FPVing for now. 
quite surprisingly, three batteries later, this thing is still alive. So I thought, I know, with the last battery, because it's a bit bored flying it around, it's a bit wobbly and stuff. I thought, oh, I haven't been able to capture any of the, the flips and rolls on the GoPro. Why don't I try and do that line of sight? I'm a terrible line of sight flyer, especially Ankara. I'll try Horizon, see how I get on, um, see what it looks like, essentially. And uh, if it crashes, you know, what the hell, who cares? This is Horizon, but I'm not sure. Yeah, looks that way. Right, so, how much, oh, it's a bit sunny, sun right in my eyes there. Let's go about here-ish. There you go, easy. I have to admit, Horizon's helping me uh, finish it off. <laughs> now what happens if we drive punching out into a power loop? Apart from the sun gets completely in my eyes and blinds me. Okay, so if we get the quad this side. I think that's better. Oh, wobbly. Yeah. This looks as dodgy as you like, really, doesn't it? Right, come on, little 2S. What you got? He's trying to get me again. It's just blowing so relentlessly in the wind. See if we can see if we can do a little bit of a, a low speed run. I say not too low. I really can't see what's going on that well. Well, not not a speed run, but a run all the same. Hang on, where am I? There I am. <laughs> Quite a gentle bounce that one really, I have to say. Not too bad. It's pretty light, so no one doesn't actually seem to care when it hits the deck. But if that's the worst that happens today, especially oh hang on, I've got something stuck on the uh, the thing there. Let's bring that down a sec. We don't want to spoil its perfect performance with a little bit of grass stuck in the motor. That's better. Okay. All right, there we go. We're up and, we're up and running again. Yeah, that is... It feels like it's got not much oomph left. So let's, let's try... Uh, a full throttle from there. It's not super quick, is it? Nice and easy to see. I'm glad I hooked up those LEDs. See what's going on. Well, listen, I, I've got to say, I think my work here is done. It flies acro. Does it fly very well? No, it flies like a bag of old bricks, but it flies better than it did when it was the official Holy Stone drone. And even that crappy camera and VTX still has a better picture than the original one. So there, take that. Should you, should you convert your own one? No, obviously not, because it's horrendous. The ESCs only work on PWM. I could go and tune it, but it'd be a case of like it'd be a bit better but it wouldn't be great if you want to fly acro don't get one of these um if you want to fly your photography or cinema drone get something like the mavic mini sort of types not one of these cheaper ones because they just don't work if you want to fly acro buy yourself a proper race style quad because this is not good at anything uh, essentially but there you go had a bit of fun with it and um, spent even more hours on it isn't that great see you next time well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out 
the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.